list. That's a very basic data structure. And this is the very traditional Lisp thing because Lisp is about list processing. So this is the main um, data structure for this language. And uh, you will see the innovation of Clojure is that it goes beyond that. But for now, let's just start with a list. And the good news is that you already know this one. So a list looks like just, well, let's just put some numbers in a list. Well, you have an opening parent and a closing parent, and you just enumerate the elements of the list. This is a sequential collection. So there is a front and there is a there is an end of it. And um, well, if you remember, it's exactly how um, the function call looks like. Okay, so it's like there is a problem. If I try to evaluate this, this is just a list. Um, of numbers. If I try to evaluate that, oh, I get an error message. And it says that the value 1 isn't a function. Oh, uh, yeah, sure. Because the default behavior is that you see an opening parent, I mean foreclosure, and it's like, oh, I have to do some work. And uh, this is a list um, that describes the task. The first one is the function, and the rest is just the um, set of the arguments. Okay? So Clojure will try to um, call a function um, like that. And um, then what can we do? Here's a trick. If I quote it, then I get to just purely just the data structure. So quoting means that it's like, yeah, I don't want closure to actually evaluate just give it back as a data structure so let's do a couple of things here so what is going to be the um, value of this expression well normally incrementing one would give two but now it just give, gives back the list containing ink in one containing the function in one so it's yeah it's very much like um in natural language you say that oh cambridge is a nice town in england and um it's like okay um you immediately jump to the meaning and probably you you've been there or you can just imagine but you know you are imagining the town but if i tell that cambridge is a word that starts with c then suddenly you don't need to jump to the meaning you just look at the word and this is sort of what's happening here and this quoting is um is just a shorthand for um for quote that gives the same um result just a data structure without trying to evaluate it as a function um and it's itself it's you know it's not a function call uh, but it's something to do and it's that's what we call it's a it's a special form so that's about quoting and um yeah we can maybe uh, stop here for a moment and think about it is that okay so closure code uh, is written in a form that it's basically um it's a data structure in the language itself okay uh, so this may not sound something big but um but that means that actually the program itself can um can work on itself because it's just working on on data so it's list manipulation well that means that we can manipulate uh programs as well so that's um we don't do them here at the moment but that's a, that's quite a big thing so let's just see how we can uh, create lists. So there is a function that just has that and you just give an arbitrary number of arguments and of course we can put other stuff there. So it doesn't have to be exactly the same type. And you have a list. Oh, that's interesting. Of course, well, yeah, uh, it's just um, the source code for ink. 
and also there is there is another way if you have a list already you can put one at the front so list likes to grow from the front so we have this is very traditional cons and um, let's say I have to quote this one and that um, produces the same thing so I can I can put one um, at the beginning so it is very important to see that list is a very very uh, simple data structure you can't do much with that and it has very limited very awkward access to the element so it's like you can think of it really as a chain and if you want to get to the element somewhere in the middle you actually have to go through okay if, and it's, you are very unlucky if you want to reach the last element so list is not good for um not good as a data structure if you really want to just access the elements randomly that's gonna be the vector that's the next um thing to do but okay how can we access the um the element and um well we can easily get the first one okay so that so uh, that gives you <coughs> the first element and similarly we can access the uh, the rest okay and that gives you a list the remaining element so it's basically the list but the very first element so this is how you can sort of cut the list into pieces it's like you can always remove the first and this is how you you get there so yeah what 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 do you do if you need the second one okay so then um well you take the rest just like before you take the rest and now that's one well, this is exactly the same call uh, as up up there well okay five is not there but then we can take um, the first of that okay and this is how we can access two by the way there is a function called second so you can just do that like first but there is no third okay so uh, this is what I said that it's sort of an awkward way of uh, accessing the element there is um, something we need to consider here we have the um, the empty list and note that I don't need to quote the empty list because there is no danger of call, trying to call a function okay so what is the first element of the empty list and uh, well yeah one might say that it's nothing and it's exactly that nil nil is the name for for nothing and it's a very important concept um, in this language but you might ask that okay what is the rest of the um, empty list and um, you know it's like um, is it nil or is it something else well it turns out to be the empty list okay so rest promises to give you a list and um, you know it works that way it takes the argument list removes the first element well there's nothing to be removed here okay because there is nothing there and it returns what remains so yes that um, gives you the empty one there is another way if you have um, some lists already in existence and you can take you know arbitrary many of them we can throw in the empty one as well right concatenation just chain them together into a simple one okay so that's uh, how concatenation uh, works so let me see oh you can also ask for the 
size of a list. And for actually for any any collection, so count will work on that. And well, here we have five. And if I ask for the size of the empty list, well, we would expect zero, and we get zero. So that's um, that's good. And uh, yes, so let's let's just do a little exercise. So um, we have. Um, we have another function so that um, reverses the list. Well, you can imagine that it's a, you know it's a bit of work for closure. It's like reversing the the chain, but that's what we can ask for. And it's um, also we can um, we can ask for the last element. So that's okay. It's certainly possible. We are not concerned here with the um, the actual time it takes for the computer to, uh, to get to the last element, but we can do that. So here comes the exercise. This is a very um, common thing uh, we do in this course, is that we imagine that someone, the evil wizard, takes away a function. And can we um, sort of replace that? So for example, if, if you think that, oh, last is, is really, really nice, but it's not available, uh, what can you do? Well, as there is a reason why I mentioned uh, reverse, because uh, what is the last element? It's just the first of the uh, reversed list. Okay, so I can ask for the first of the reverse of And it's like that. And we can be even more um, elegant here because we know function composition. Okay. So I can take comp and I, I take the first after taking uh, the reverse. And that's five again. So that's list. Um, it's a sequential collection. You can put anything. It's um, it's a very basic data structure um, in in Lisp and in Clojure, and it is on, also used for um, for function calls. But it's also a general purpose um, sequential data structure, sequential collection.